Dragons in the Waters by Madeline Lengel. 10. The Body in the Hearse. His terror was so great that he did not even cry out. The body gave a very living grunt as Simon almost knocked the wind out of. Who was it? Not Cousin Forsyth. The grunt was followed by muffled sounds, but no words. Simon was almost thrown to the floor as the hearse began to move, accelerating rapidly. The shirred lavender funeral curtains covered the windows, and Simon precipitated himself across the hearse and struggled to open them, but they were tacked down. While he was trying to pull them loose, his eyes adjusted, adjusted to the dim light, and he turned to the still grunting body on the stretcher. There lay a man, trussed up like a fowl. A blindfold covered his eyes, and a gag was rammed into his mouth. With trembling fingers, Simon untied both to reveal a rather pale face and a completely bald head. Uncle Father, Simon cried. Dark eyes widened in surprise. Who, who are who are you? How do you know me? Your Polly's godfather, Simon said, starting to work on the knots. He was slowed down by the rocking of the hearse, which appeared to be traveling much too rapidly for the state of the road. Make haste slowly, Canon Talus advised as the hearse jounced over a rut, and Simon was thrown against him. And while you're working, tell me who you are and keep your voice down. I'm Simon Rainier, Simon Boulevard, Quentin Fair Rainier, and I've been on the Orient with Polly and Charles and Dr. O'Keefe and Mr. Theo, too, of course. The terrifying yet tedious job of loosening the cannon's bonds was, done, was finally done, and Simon helped him to sit up. Canon Talus pursed his mouth as though to whistle, but his lips were so sore and bruised from the gag that only a small puff came out, he asked. Where's the rest of the family? Home on Benicid Island. Dr. O'Keefe brought Polly and Charles with him when he was asked to spend a month in Venezuela. You really are, Canon Talus? The bald man nodded thoughtfully. Curiouser and curiouser. I thought, I guess Mr. Theo didn't tell you much when he called you. So right. But you came anyhow. He said you would. When I got an unexpected and extremely cryptic phone call from him, I thought I'd better come see what was up. I shall want you to tell me what is up, Simon. But first, we'd better try to look out and see where we're going. Between them, they managed to loosen a curtain. They managed to loosen a corner of the lavender curtain, which had been tacked down very thoroughly indeed. They peered out. The hearse was bouncing along with no more than a double rut cut through the jungle. Trailing vines brushed against the windows. A ferocious-looking wild hog tore through the underbrush and vanished into green. We're not moving as quick. We are not moving as quickly as it seems, Canon Talus said. I wonder if we could get out. He tried to open the rear doors. We're locked in. Do you have a knife on you? No, sir, Simon said. I'm sorry. No matter. I doubt if it would help. This is a solid lock. Not the thing one would normally expect on a hearse. It may be padlocked from the outside. The hearse, jo the hearse jolted and veered violently to one side. They're not going to be able to drive much farther. Not unless this path turns into a road, and somehow I doubt if it will. Can you tell me quickly what's been happening? As quickly as possible, prompted by astute questions, Simon told Ken and Talus what had happened since the forklift incident on the dock at Savannah. The hearse continued to crash roughly through the jungle. Simon thought it was never going to stop. Are we being kidnapped? It would appear so, though I'm hardly a kid. But why? Somebody is still trying to dispose of you, it would seem. And somebody doesn't want you around to clear things up. But that policeman, Gutierrez, he wasn't in Savannah or on the ship. He couldn't be the murderer, but he did throw me into the hearse, knocking the wind out of me. It does appear to be a rather complex maze, though I begin to glimpse a pattern. What, sir? You're not overly lamented. Late cousin Forsyth seems to have been involved in one way or another with a good many people. Is, is Gutierrez going to kill us? Since he has not already done so, I somehow doubt it. And when I do not arrive and it's noticed that you've vanished, there's going to be considerable excitement on the Orion. But does anybody know you're coming? I mean, for sure, I was puzzled enough by Theo's call to decide to leave London and come. 
and I was concerned enough to phone a friend of mine, Alejandro Hurtado, chief of police in Caracas, and ask him to make sure that the captain of the Orion, as well as Theo, be advised of the time of my arrival. Hurtado told me that he would arrange to have me met, so I somehow doubt if our present plight will go unnoticed by him. He put his hand out suddenly and touched Simon's shoulder. We're slowing down. The hearse jounced along for a moment, then came to a lurching halt. After a moment, the doors were flung open. The hearse had stopped in a small clearing where a helicopter was waiting. Gutierrez peered in at them. I am so sorry to inconvenience you, he said in the most uncouteous manner. The lips of some must be closed, so I have taken you hostage. He grabbed Simon and pulled the struggling boy out of the hearse and into the helicopter. The soldier with the rifle knocked Cannon Talus on the head, stunning him, and then slung the heavy body over his shoulder as though it were a sack of grain and dumped it into the copter. Gutierrez was at the controls. In a moment, the incredible noise of the blades deafened Simon, and then they were airborne. And we'll pause there.